Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Gunpla review. This time we're looking at the Super Gundam. The combination of the RX-178, Gundam Mark II, and the FXA-05D G-Defenser. For those who are unfamiliar with this unit, it made a brief appearance in Zeta Gundam as a way to try to extend the life of the Mark II by combining it with a fighter craft to becoming a more powerful version of the Gundam. It didn't have great results. That being said, the G-Defenser is still kind of a cool looking fighter craft. And according to Gundam lore, it can combine with the Gym 3 to become the Gym Defenser. However, as I don't have a Gym 3 kit, I cannot test if that is actually an option with this version of the G-Defenser. As this kit has two different models, we're going to have to talk about a lot of different things. First, we'll begin with the G-Defenser. One thing I want to make clear right now is that the Gym Defenser does not come with the stand that it is on. That's just one of my stands to make it a little more viewable for the video. But it does come with a little adapter part, I believe. Like the <laughs> and the stand falls apart. Everything falls apart. Overall, the Gym Defenser has a couple different modes here. So we see we have our landing struts out here for landing. If you can actually put this part in and close it up for actual flight. And there's a little thing here you can swap in for when it becomes the backpack mode. It also has a nice little thing you can open up here with the missiles. However, I will point out that when you build this kit, the missiles are not painted and ended up having to paint them once they were inside this whole strut thing, which is a pain to do. I would highly recommend if you get this kit to paint the missiles beforehand, either gray or white, so that they look a little bit nicer than mine do. Close it up. Our wings can fold in. Again, if you're like in landed mode, or if you don't want them sticking out on the kit when it becomes a backpack, though I think they primarily do. And the little tail part here also can fold down like it is supposed to. And there, I believe, properly for the backpack mode. There are stickers on the little tail things here and on the wings. I think there's another sticker in here somewhere. Stability-wise, it's not great, as you can see. It seems to wobble a lot. And the last little gimmick of the kit is that, boop, little module here can go off. It becomes its own little fighter. And these little prongs also help with the stability of the units. Kind of a cool looking little vehicle. And it has a little hole right here, so you can connect it to a stand if you'd like to have it there as a background piece as well. And that is the G Defenser in all its glory. While the leg struts might not be the best, I would point out that it is a relatively stable kit. And when you put it into backpack mode, of course, it'll hold its position nicely and function for what it needs to do as part of the Super Gundam. But it could still work perfectly fine if you want it as an aircraft, as I had it earlier, held up on the stand. And now let's take a look at the main body of the units the Gundam Mark II. The first thing to notice about this unit is it's based off the 2002 Mark II design. So it hasn't aged great, and comparatively to the revived version, lacks in a lot of regards. So as we take a look here, not a lot of stickers. I believe there's one for the little crotchal area, uh, the eyes, the cameras. You're just use rule stuff. Otherwise, this is a relatively simple kit that keeps its coloration looking nice because it is a 1980s robot. Uh, you will see here there is kind of a double thing here, so the toe moves and the heel stays in place. So then go up something like that. Pretty good little leg movement. I got or there's some nice foot movement here for sure, which is generally good. Skirt also gets a pretty good high thing there, so we can actually get the leg to go. Pretty decent kick. Sorry. It is very tight, which I don't know if that's because of, of my build or because of the age of the kit in general. But we got a nice eh, 90 degree knee, not perfect. 
but its joint is stiff and it holds its place. Uh, due to how far that side skirt can go, you don't get a lot of side leg movement. Just unfortunate. Arms get a nice rotation, good wobble around. You know, like that. And not too bad, but pretty stiff, like I said. Almost feels like the arms. It feels like the shoulder joint's gonna pop out, but the arm itself is very stiff. Again, only 90 degree on the elbow. This is the old type of jointing. So it becomes a thing. Wrist, of course, is a ball joint, so it just wobbles around. Only a little bit of work on the waist because of how the backpack is designed. And because I have the little Vulcans hooked to the head here, not a lot of head movement. But you have a lot more if you don't have the Vulcans equipped. Beam sabers can wobble a little bit and adjust if necessary, which is really helpful when you put on the backpack. Otherwise, nothing else actually... Nothing else moves on this backpack part at all. I believe there's a little hook here that you can unlatch if you want to put your Hyper Bazooka there. Very stiff, very old kit, which is very much kind of a bummer. It's not going to compare to the newer versions of the kit, but for the sake of being able to hold on its backpack and just kind of look cool, it can still do it because it does at least visually look nice. Of course, we also have to look at our accessories. So first off, here's this big boy, which can barely fit in the screen. There it is, the Mega Beam Launcher. It's a little connector port right here that goes into the side of the aircraft, and of course, little things here pop up, and a, shoot, <laughs> and the handle, which I'm going to need a tweezer for, can be pulled out here to be held in the hand of the kit. Yay. However, if you don't like the Mega Beam Rifle, we have some other options. We have, Whom the bazooka. It has a little bit of wobble in the handle, but not much. Just enough to make it easier to position on the shoulder. And a nice ridge here that works really well with the shoulder guard. Of course, if you don't like bazookas, there is always the Mark II beam rifle. Complete little thing here that pops out. You can keep it down, your choice. A little sticker for the scope there. Pretty cool looking, kind of plain. Could use a little bit of a paint job to make it look more show authentic, but otherwise, a fine enough accessory. Unfortunately, if you want to go melee, your option is, foom, toothpick beam saber. Told you this is an older kit. You can always go and paint the blade, paint the little hand guard here, and it would look fine, but honestly, totally not worth using. Plus, you only have one hand for each side. So your right hand is constantly stuck as the trigger finger, which is gonna just look awkward holding a beam saber. Bottom line is with this version of the kit, you don't wanna go melee. You also finally have the shield here. Nice little two-tone look. Looks pretty decent. And I believe, ah, so a knock there. Like how this is so much harder to do because I'm <laughs> I'm not looking at it directly, I'm looking at it through the camera. There you go. You can also turn it into the smaller version of the shield as well, in case you don't want to have the big shield lugging around, or you want to save space while using the Super Gundam version of the kit. In terms of spare parts, we've got one singular polycap right here. It's one of those weird round ones that are rarely ever used. But unlike most kits, we have a second set of polycaps. We got some feet parts here, shoulder parts, little, uh, these little circular connector things. A few things here that aren't usually spare parts, which could be useful for repairing certain kits that may have taken some damage over the years. If you're gonna set this thing up as the Super Gundam, then most of your extra accessories aren't really going to matter because you're probably going to use the Hyper Beam Launcher and the shield. 
and it all comes together, it looks pretty good. And if you put it up on a stand in order to make it look like it's flying, it'll look even better. The great drawbacks to this kit is really its age. Like I said, it's based on a 2002 design, and it really feels like it. There's very limited mobility in the body of the robot, but the fighter craft does look pretty cool and does hold together nicely, although its landing struts are a little loose. That's primarily due to the fact that this thing needs to bend around in order to fit onto the robot. This is your only choice if you want a G-Defenser. However, if you want a Gundam Mark II, you're probably better off going with either the Revive version or possibly the real grade version, which does have a few extra things. Accessories wise, it's not too bad. And while Melee is kind of garbage, if you're going to use this kit to put it in this mode, it doesn't really matter because you're probably going to use one of the ranged weapons anyways. It doesn't have an overwhelming amount of stickers. Most of them are for the fighter craft and the rest are just the standard kind of stickers you might expect on a standard Gundam unit. I don't hate the kit, but there's definitely some frustrating aspects to it. Prying out the handle for the Mega Beam Launcher is a major pain. It required assistance and tweezers to try to pry that thing out. Once we got it out, though, it looks pretty cool in its full battle mode. And due to the stiffness of the joints, the entire kit ends up holding everything in place really nicely. In fact, if anything, the stiffness of this kit allows it to hold up its backpack much easier than something with looser joints, which might topple under the weight. I have mixed feelings about this kit. When I built it, gosh, probably back in 2020, I thought it would be one of my first five Haro kits. But after having built some much nicer units, oof, it's hard to say, but it's not terrible, it's just old, if that makes any sense. I'm curious to see how well this pack might attach to one of the newer additions of this kit. However, if you're a Zeta Gundam completionist, you're probably going to have to grab this. But if you just want to have Camille and Jared in their Mark IIs wailing on each other, you might be better off buying alternate editions of this kit. Thank you for watching. I hope this has helped your Gumpla purchasing decision. Until next time, I'll see you at the tavern.